Hey everyone, in the news this week, King Charles is apparently going to wait until next year to get his crown, and it says a lot about the state of the country that even the king can't get a dentist appointment. According to the National Statistics Office, the number of heroin users is, quote, shooting up. And Liverpool, the city that the Beatles came from, is going to host the Eurovision Song Contest next year, which, quite frankly, is like letting Paris Hilton live at Albert Einstein's house, or indeed Joe Biden live in Thomas Jefferson's house. This decision to move the contest away from Kiev is all due to the ongoing war in Ukraine, where the resistance fighters have been managing to hold their own. Russia once had the second most powerful army in the world, and now they're reduced to having the second most powerful army in Ukraine. Either way, the place is less appealing to the television and media types who would normally be looking forward to a weekend's all-expenses-paid trip. You know, it's one thing putting a blue and yellow flag in your social media feed, but it's another one having to be reduced to staying at a two-star hotel because the Marriott doesn't have any electricity. Anyway, this week saw Vladimir Putin turn 70 years old, and he shares a birthday with Simon Cowell, which certainly puts some of those talent shows into perspective. You know, Simon Cowell might make a few jokes at your expense on the television, but he's unlikely to order an assassination attempt, where the police later declare that 26 gunshots implies a suicide. Vladimir Putin is of course the sort of guy who goes after left-wing opponents by sabotaging the left-hand wing of their plane. But the war has taken a few turns in the past couple of weeks. The main bridge that connects Russia to Crimea was partially destroyed a few days ago in a bomb attack. And the Nord Stream pipeline was also attacked, although in many respects that probably does more damage to Germany than anyone else. Many conspiracy theories suspect that the pipeline may have been attacked by the USA or China as part of a scheme to destabilise Europe and create a reliance on energy imports via other means. The Russian army, for their part, has also been forced to open up new recruitment channels, releasing thousands of convicted criminals from prison straight into the army, and extending the draft to most civilians who in return have tried to flee the country. The smart people, of course, would just do well to join the army. That way you get a free trip west to the border and you only have to make the last couple of miles yourself. Throw in the lack of goods in the shops due to sanctions and it's all rather reminiscent of the Soviet era. There's no joke where a man walks into a shop in Soviet Russia and he asks the clerk, do you have any meat? And the clerk replies, no, we don't have any fish. The shop that doesn't have any meat is over the road. Actually, the better one would be the one where Stalin is attracted to a girl and he grants her any wish she desires. She says she wants him to open up the borders. And Stalin replies, of course, so we can have some alone time. Anyway, see you next week. Please subscribe.